Well, you're, you're absolutely right to ask that question. And, and bear in mind, so many of the risk models that the banks have in place are not really tuned for a kind of pandemic scenario. So they got it absolutely wrong during the pandemic. So they over-provision, as you rightly point out. They put they, they estimated we're going to have huge credit losses. And the reason really was that they a large part and component of their loss forecasts are unemployment statistics. And unemployment looked really, really bad during the pandemic. However, people were getting generous unemployment benefits. Benefits. And so you didn't see the kind of bankruptcies and insolvencies you would otherwise have seen with that high unemployment. And so banks were sort of caught wrong foot of this. Well, things didn't go as bad as we thought, and now we're OK. But it's a good point. I mean, perhaps now the, these bankruptcies will come as, as this sort of stimulus gets pulled back. But it seems that unemployment is going down. It's, it looks like things are under control. And the banks really have come out of this swimmingly. Bear in mind, if you look at things like charge-offs and write-offs, let's take credit cards, it's really at a very, very low level, almost historic lows in terms of the charge-offs they had on their credit card portfolios, which is perhaps the most sensitive portfolio they have in terms of lending. So. They got it wrong during the pandemic. Maybe, you're right, they're going to get it wrong now that things have improved. But I, I think they're probably on the right side of things now. It looks like things are getting better, and all these write-offs and losses they thought were going to come are not going to materialise. Octavio, let's take a step back. We've just had the greatest economic shock since the Second World War. We've lost over 8 million jobs, uh, according to the most recent data, still in the United States. Uh, corporates have been through the greatest seismic shock in living memory. And yet we haven't had huge write-downs. We haven't had huge personal insolvencies. We haven't seen a huge rush into Chapter 11. It begs the question, have we created a load of zombies because of low interest rates in the United States? And actually, the problem uh, still awaits us. There's definitely been a lot of zombies created, and, and not just in the United States, in Europe certainly too, and in Asia as well. So there's a lot of stimulus that has gone to individual corporations, either direct payments, direct subsidies, loans, uh, monetary policy too has helped tremendously. There's a lot of firms that have become dependent on very, very low interest rates, either consciously or unconsciously, and once that turns around, they're going to suffer terribly. So there's a lot of zombies out there, yes. I mean, it's, they're hard to identify maybe because their, their financials might look actually remarkably good. But that is going to come back to haunt us at some stage. Now, the question becomes, do we have to support those firms forever? Uh, and sometimes these kind of stimulus programs have a tendency to be put into place on a temporary basis and then just survive forever as you start to realize, well, if we take this back now, things are going to get a bit ugly. So I, I think it's an interesting question to see. I mean, how many of these zombies get revealed now as things return to normality? I really have no direct question to answer that, but there's there's a lot of them, clearly. There's a lot of firms that are really dependent on the stimulus now, be it financial, fiscal or monetary.